we're driving through Custer State Park and look at how foggy it is. We're up high, we're in a, at a pretty high point, we're up in the clouds. That's what all this fog is, it's the clouds. You see this? And it's noon, it's, it's, a, it's 12 o'clock here. And look at how foggy it is, and it is cold. So we left the Badlands in shorts, and we get here, and it's so cold, I can see, look at the, how foggy. It's so cold here, I can see my breath. It's completely different than the Badlands. My ears have popped several times driving on this road. This is Highway 87. This is the same road as the Bluebell Campground. That's the campground where we are staying. We just ate lunch at the Bluebell Lodge. They have a pretty nice menu. Fred and I both had uh, warm chicken pot pies with um, cornbread. It was pretty good. I would imagine that we will be at that restaurant a couple more times during our stay here. We're in Custer State Park for four nights. And the, the Bluebell Lodge, the dining room, is pretty close to our campsite. So it's one o'clock in the afternoon, Friday. We are riding along the Peter Norbeck Scenic Byway. We have only been in Custer State Park for a few hours. I'm sure it doesn't stay foggy like this the entire time. Maybe tomorrow it will clear out some. I think we're going to go back to the campsite. Uh, we've been in our camper for a week now. We're going to look for a, a place where we can wash our bed linens and some of our dirty clothes and just do some general house cleaning, um, fix the dogs some food and just kind of get adjusted at our new campsite. That's our plan for today. And then tomorrow we think we're going to go into Rapid City. Fred wants an oil change and I would like to check out the city. They have a nice tribute to all the past presidents that I'd like to take a look at. They have bronze statues of all the uh, past presidents. They call it the City of Presidents, I believe. But you can see this Peter Norbeck scenic byway. It's very pretty here. This is a beautiful state park and it's huge. We are at Custer State Park, the Bluebell Campground. We're all set up. We're in Site 29 and we are loving it here. I have a big pot of chili cooking. It is freezing cold. You know, it's funny. I had a um, I have a sunburn from yesterday and we get here and it is freezing cold. It hasn't uh, left the 50s all day and it's been a misty and uh, rainy all day. But this campsite, we, we really like it. Um, they've got a, a fire going over there and the camp host came by and said that they have s'mores and invited us down to join them at 730. Um, this is quite a bit different than the Badlands. We love the Badlands, but this is more our camping style and we love it here. This is what's out uh, the side of our camper. It's really nice. Really nice. This is a great campsite. I just went to the laundromat that's um, in the campground and washed all of my clothes and washed our bedding um, so we have nice clean sheets i spread the electric blanket out and it's cranked up so uh, i'm going to take a shower this is the bathhouse right down there the showers look amazing I'll, i'm going to get a shot of it later oh look this right here's where they're doing the s'mores oh my gosh it's right next to our campsite that's going to be great we do like uh what what are some examples in what, the uh, Bison Olympics? Um, yeah, well, the Bison Olympics are... They're going to come to that, I think. They already said it, right? Yeah, yeah. So then you go through this booklet and do all these super fun activities about stuff in the park. And if you get all the things done that you need to, in the front here, it tells you, based on your age, what you need to do. 
if you get everything done, you get an awesome patch. And you become a so, junior naturalist of yes. the park. And they're yes. unique every single year. Mm -hmm. So if you guys are interested, we have a bunch of so these. So you didn't do this one year. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, so we can definitely hand those out to you and then we can, and yeah. This program here right now counts as one of these, so we can sign off on them for you. If you're interested. So I'll keep them do you guys work for the state of South Dakota? We all do, yep. So, um, the four of us, and then everyone back there at that table. Very nice. And you, you go around to the different parks all over the state and do this? or No, we just work for Custer. And so, um, we just go to the various campgrounds and provide yeah. programs, all the way down to, like, little kid stuff, all the way up to stuff for adults. Yeah. That's awesome. We'll be, yeah. we'll be here quite often doing some evening programs. Yeah, we're all kind of skilled in separate things. Yeah. So. This is super cool. Yeah. So this is Elizabeth, and she's with the state uh, South Dakota Fish and Game. Fish and, game. Yes. and she is so informative. It is wonderful that South Dakota sends their people out here to these state parks to inform everyone. Elizabeth has just told me we're off there on the, can find the bison herd and the donkeys, and she's been so informative. I wish the state of Florida had a program like this. That's great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's going around. Here, I'll let you see this one. You look sweaty. Or is that just from the <laughs> <laughs> I think so. All right. All right. Thank you so much. You're That's great. Right. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> guys. Ready to make Here's my stores? stick back. We have plenty of marshmallows. Thank you. Yeah. Chinese, Thank you guys. It's awesome. Right ahead. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks. Oh my gosh. This is so good. Mm. Delicious. We are going into the town of Custer. Downtown Custer. Nice little town. Looks like there's a lot to do down here. Several pizza places. Custer County Museum. Right next to the Dollar General, that building right there, is the uh, Mount Rushmore Brewing Company. Said so they had a tasting room. There's a state farm, Karen. You could live out here. Gold Pan Saloon. Calamity Jane Coffee Shop. That's pretty cute. It's an old town. Deep Creek Art Gallery. So we are checking out downtown Rapid City. And this is supposed to be the home of the president. So who is this? Harry Truman. Harry Truman. So at a six block section, they have past presidents on every street corner. It says Dewey defeats Truman. And these are life-size um, statues, aren't they? That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Very cool. <laughs> Here's me, Harry and me. Say hi, Harry. Who is this? James Madison. Well, surely this isn't a life-size si statue, is it? No, they were small back then. The early 1800s. Was he that little? Okay, so here we have Thomas Jefferson. Here's the Ronald Reagan statue. These are actual size. 
Very nice. So this is James Garfield. He's a president that was assassinated uh, during his presidential term. Second president to be assassinated. He was the second one to get assassinated. This is Dwight D. Eisenhower. Stand next to him. Let's see. Now he's on a little pedestal, but you guys are about the same height. He's on a pedestal. Now this is Grover Cleveland. He was kind of a stocky fellow. We believe that Grover Cleveland was a president that served two terms. However, they were not consecutive. So this is Rutherford B. Hayes. He was a president after Grant, which would have been what, the 19th president? He was a small man. He was a Civil War veteran too. This is amazing, um, seeing these presidents in, in a, a life-size statue and standing next to them. It's very, very interesting. I am a civil engineer, and uh, here's a Rapid City civil engineering firm, <laughs> downtown Rapid City. Here is the Pentington County Courthouse. Some nice uh, government buildings here. This is a lot of fun, just hanging out downtown Rapid City. For all you Obama lovers out there, Barack Obama. Wow, uh, he is a tall, very thin man. Wow, it's pretty cool, even though I'm not a fan still very cool. Hey, here's George Bush. Do you remember what that dog's name was? Oh, I'm looking at George Bush. So here's Richard Nixon. And a, a little funny story, personal story about Richard Nixon. I remember as a young girl growing up, my parents had a Richard Nixon porcelain plate hanging up in their kitchen for years and I do have that plate now it's hanging up in one of the rooms in my house just a interesting little memory Andrew Johnson Andrew Johnson there's Jimmy Carter do you know a little fact about Jimmy Carter Peanuts. And he's the oldest, he was the oldest living president, right? Still is. Still is. Here's a store that sells gourmet olive oils. Vita Sena olive oil. That's cool. A pawn shop. And Fred has found the next statue. This is William Jefferson Clinton, Bill Clinton. Hmm. I did not have sex with that woman. <laughs> Gerald Ford. From Michigan. He took office after uh, Nixon was fired. Gerald Ford. And prior, prior to Jimmy Carter. When William Henry Harrison. What? Why does he have that outfit like that? He was a soldier. A soldier in what army? The American army during the early 1800s. That was our hat? Yeah. What kind of hat is that? I've never seen a hat like that on an American soldier. Well, I think Andy Jackson wore one like that too. So William Taft, 
What's he doing? He's well, late. The first president ever to throw the baseball out into a national baseball game. Oh, really? That's why he's holding that baseball there. Oh, really? Is that what he has behind his back? And, uh, sure is. He was the largest president, the fattest president, of about 300 pounds. This guy was 300 pounds? I think so. And after his presidency, he became a Supreme Court Justice. Really? And he's buried in Arlington. Only two presidents, Sam and Kennedy. Who is this? LBJ. LBJ? Yeah. While you're doing that, I'm going to step in here. Where are you going? Right in there. Do you have anything you could say about LBJ first? Well, he took over after Kennedy was assassinated and uh, he went through some hard times during the 60s with the civil rights and the Vietnam War and uh, he elected not to run again. Because, really? Yeah. Fred found a gun store. Jeez. That's a brown bear from Russia. Jesus. I hope you can get an idea of how tall that bear is. Wow. Here's a polar bear taken at the site, it taken in Siberia at the Chuchki Sea Ice Pack. It's a male Arctic polar bear. Oh my word. And it's taller than that bear in that other display. Holy moly. That's something else. Wow. So tall. This is a pretty cool gun store. wonder how long it's going to take me to get Fred out of here. Well, we made it out of the gun store. James Monroe. James Monroe. I think he was the fifth president. Well, he was a little fellow. Yeah. They all were small back in those days, early 1800s. <laughs> yep. Okay. If this firehouse thing is a restaurant, we could eat there. But I do want to go in that store right there. Prairie Edge. I've about gotten killed twice downtown. I almost got run over once and then I about broke my neck on a step. I swear, these downtown areas are a lot more hazardous than the woods. Hey, where'd he go? Pretty neat store. Some beautiful pottery. Those dishes are gorgeous. Sioux Trading Post. This is pretty cool. A lot of these um, Indian remedies. This is for cough and congestion. The, the smell is very strong right here. Chamomile, calming your nerves. That's pretty neat. These are hides. This is a sheep hide. Another sheep hide. I guess sheep. Here's a deer hide.
That's beautiful hanging up there. Beautiful. I'd love to have that in my house. That's pretty. for the dress with the moccasins. That's so pretty. Beautiful. Here's some more of those buffalo hides. I have no idea what the price on those would be. I'm sure quite a lot. This is gorgeous too. Ah, the buffalo robe up here, 2800. See that? The beaded elk skull is pretty neat, 1800. Five ninety-five. Beautiful. These photographs are gorgeous of the buffalo. So much of this artwork in here was made on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. We tried to go there, but they're closed right now. I think COVID um, hit them pretty hard. But these are all paintings. Like this one is from Jim Yellowhawk. It's a canvas print. This purse that I was just looking at over here. This one. It's all handmade on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. That, Purse is five hundred dollars, but it's beautiful and it's handmade. And goodness knows those people need some support. A lot of poverty on that reservation. Here's more of those buffalo robes and the dresses hanging here. Most of this, this like I said, was made on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. This is an amazing store. I've never seen anything like this. Definitely worth a stop if you're in Rapid City. So we're gonna go eat at this firehouse. It says Firehouse Brewing Company. We might have a cold beer. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? What'd you say? I think I will have a cold beer in this place. So we are eating at this firehouse um, brewery. We got the Bell Tower Lager. It's very good. We got the firehouse sandwich. Yum. And I have onion rings. Fred got baked beans. Well, that was a great little restaurant. The food was fantastic. And the beer makes everything tolerable. Case in point. But all kidding aside, that was a lot of fun. And we love downtown Rapid City. We love Rapid City. This is a great town. led me down to this back alley. I have no idea how he found this, but he did. A lot of um, Indian murals. 
Don't know what's going on here. Oh, they hit them. Yeah, they about hit them. So, even... This does not look like a back alley in downtown Lakeland where we come from. Oh my, look at this. It just goes on and on. This painted murals, the graffiti, whatever you want to call it. I think it looks pretty cool. Looks Indian in that painting, doesn't he? That looks like a bear claw. Doesn't it? There's a cigar bar. Okay, so we are just kind of exploring a little bit back here and we are just now turning on Iron Mountain Road and we have passed some of the most beautiful home sites. There's Spokane Creek cabins and campground. Off of Iron Mountain Road. This is a beautiful state. We are falling in love with South Dakota. Now on Iron Mountain Road, there's supposed to be tunnels. You're supposed to get your first glimpse of Mount Rushmore. Um, so there's some like pigtail turns they call it. This is supposed to be a very scenic uh, road to drive on. Look at that. Oh, we just pulled over for a second to give the dogs a break from the car and we get out and the air is crisp and cool. It's a beautiful day. It's turned out to be a beautiful day and we're just looking around. And this is just so beautiful. Look at this. I think we should build a little house right here and stay here.
we're back on the road again. We're going to the um, back to the lodge to have dinner. It's just so cold outside. Um, I don't know. I don't really feel like cooking, and there's this great lodge that's so close. So we're gonna go back there for dinner. So this is the Bluebell Lodge and dining room. Okay, so here's something interesting for all you people making reservations at Custer Park. Our campsite is at Bluebell. We just drove through Sylvan Lake Campground um, and the campsites at Bluebell are actually larger and spaced further apart. And as far as having access to Sylvan Lake and the trail, you have to drive to it anyway from the campground. So I'm happy with the campground at uh, Bluebell probably more so than the campground at Sylvan Lake. And I know that the Sylvan Lake campground is the most sought after campground in this park. All right, so I'm so excited. We are about to walk around Sylvan Lake. This is supposed to be one of the prettiest hikes in the park. There is a gulch trail that's longer that I really had my heart set on. I think it's around three miles or so. Um, but apparently it's in the coldest part of the park. Um, there's no sun that gets back there and it is still iced over. And so that part of the trail is closed. We did just talk to a guy and he said, you can hike it at your own risk. He said, but you better have walking sticks. And we don't have any walking sticks and we have these two dogs and it was going to be challenging on a best day for us. So unfortunately we're probably going to have to pass on that disappointing but this is going to be a beautiful hike it's by itself and the guy said it's going to take us about 45 minutes to an hour to do People like to kayak in this lake. Lucy, those geese will get you. Fred, look at this. Lucy. Those geese can be very mean. Fred was attacked once by geese on the Danube River. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Come on, Lucy. This is like Hezekiah's tunnel in Israel. I have a video on that. So this is the Gulch Trail, Sunday Gulch Trail, and it is closed still for the winter season. And this is what May 23rd, and the trail is still closed. 24. 24. There's the king of the mountain right here. King, queen of the mountain. The queen of the mountain. Oh wow! Look, that guy up there is climbing down. A rock climber. 
Holy moly, look at that. Look at this. Stairs. A lot of stairs. Okay. We made it to the top. Look at this view. That's the trail through there. We have completed our hike around Sylvan Lake. That was a beautiful little hike. I'm gonna end the video here, but please stay tuned for the next video where we tour the Wildlife Loop Road around Custer State Park. It was amazing. We found the buffalo herd, and also uh, we will tour Mount Rushmore and the Crazy Horse Monument. So it's some pretty great content. Uh, please subscribe and be sure you uh, watch our next video. Thanks. Bye.